Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to do is my 10,000 subscriber special video. And so I just wanted to say guys, thank you for all of the support that this channel has got over the last couple of months and especially this last year. You guys really do seem to enjoy this kind of content and it means a lot because, well, it definitely takes a lot of time to get all of this stuff set up and it definitely um, means a lot to see you guys subscribing, sharing these videos, uh, leaving fun comments and suggestions and asking lots of different questions. Um, and so guys, I just wanted to say thank you. And so this is essentially going to be my way of giving back to you guys um, because you guys have given me so much as of this last couple of months and years. And so with that being said, before we go forward, I wanted to give one huge shout out to Real Perf Guy. This is his Twitter. And so if you guys feel like you've gotten any sort of benefit out of this channel, um, then you will absolutely have gotten a ton of benefit out of Real Perf Guy as well. So go and follow him on Twitter and go and give him lots of different support. He has been absolutely instrumental in actually getting this type of content out, um, specifically this topic in general. And so if you guys feel like um, you've had any benefit from what I've done in this actual channel, please consider following him and actually chatting with him and giving him all sorts of support. He's really been instrumental in helping get this going. So. With that being said, what I wanted to do is show you guys how to modify the NVIDIA registry. And so up until this point, modifying the NVIDIA registry has kind of been seen as like dark magic that a lot of these registry keys have been undocumented and have required lots of different tests to actually validate to make sure that they're actually doing something. Because if you enter in the wrong values, sometimes nothing will happen. And so trying to validate this can be really a um, very complex process. And so thankfully, NVIDIA has actually opened up their drivers and the actual information about their kernel modules in on GitHub. And so for this one, for example, I'll be linking all of these in the description so you guys can actually see this for yourself as well too. So this file holds resource manager registry key definitions that are shared between Windows and Unix. And so specifically, it gives you all sorts of different actual values. And so with that one, um, it shows you all sorts of different information about each registry key. And so for example, with RM inst lock, if I wanted to, for example, this changes how the actual memory works with the actual operating system. So if I wanted to make all of the actual system memory coherent, which essentially is a way of actually organizing and actually using the memory, then I would do rm inst lock as a D word value, which if you're wanting to add that, you specifically go into here, into this driver tree specifically. Here, make a D word, rm inst lock, and it has to be spelled exactly the same way. It's case sensitive. And then you go into there. Let's say I want to make everything coherent. I would take that hex value right there copy paste and then now I restart and it should make that but with that being said everything past this point that we will be discussing is extremely experimental everything that happens to your computer after this point you are taking on the innate responsibility and the inherent risk that I am presenting to you so with that being said whatever happens to your system after this point is completely on you this is me just doing my best to explain this to you and give you the information so that way you guys can have more education and be more empowered with your actual computer. Now, with that being said, why does modifying the NVIDIA registry matter at all? Like, why do we modify registries for different information? Well, a classic example is one that I've covered in my channel before. Um, RM, so this one is specifically disabled dynamic P states. So what that does is, at idle, um, a P state is a power saving state. And so my graphics card at idle with nothing enabled, no games running, just windows in the background will draw about 80 watts. And my clocks will be locked to essentially one of the lowest power states. And so that defaults to about 2500, 2600, 1965, and about 2500 as well in the effective clock. And so by disabling the P states, we are essentially telling the actual clocks and the graphics card to not save power specifically for those parts of the actual graphics card. And so with that being said, when I actually modify that value in particular, what that's going to do is it actually increases my overall clocks by about an extra 200 to 300 megahertz. And it will keep those locked to the highest power state that they're allowed to boost to, which in this case would be about 1100 millivolts. And so, that's why modifying the registry has a lot of different potential because we're allowed to change everything we want about the graphics card or different components within Windows. And so with that being said, 
that's the reason why I wanted to make this video and show you guys what this actually happens. And so one actual registry value that I'll essentially give to you guys for free is actually called RM Power Feature. Now, why I was actually interested in this one in particular is because if I sort by just the actual um, word power, there's only really a couple of different references inside of this entire registry file folder. And so that's why I wanted to figure out about this one because this is one of the only few that has almost no information about it. So this D word is not tied to this information down here. This information is all together, but this registry value is just left alone. And so we have no essentially information about it, but I went and did some further digging inside of the actual registry and I managed to find actually an example from NVIDIA themselves, specifically referencing that D word in particular. And so if I go into, for example, their actual registry pages in their GitHub, I can pull up specifically their hypervisor, which is actually their uh, virtual machine platform, and I can see a registry value that it references for that key. And so if I go back into there, we can actually see that it mentions that information as part of the actual uh, string itself. So this matches exactly. So NV string our features. And so if we enter in that specific D word, it's really interesting because if I go into here and then type it exactly as it's spelled inside of there, and I give it that hex value. Now, our idle power consumption increases even further. So before, with just disabled dynamic P states, we were at about 100 watts at idle. Now, with that turned on, now I'm drawing almost 150 watts at idle. Now, what is RM power feature? Because you're probably wondering, what does that D word actually do? Well, here's some documentation from somebody else that also had some interesting information. I can actually back this up with more actual documentation from NVIDIA. As you observe, the NVIDIA driver unloads the video engines on certain GPUs when they go idle to save power. So this is a form of power saving. You can disable this behavior by loading the NVIDIA kernel module. So what that means is that essentially, this is a form of what's known as power gating or clock gating. Now, what is power gating and clock gating? Well, it's essentially a form of power saving as we've seen in the actual description. And so here's a fun way from a technical standpoint as to what it is. It's one of power saving techniques in which the additional logic is added to a circuit to prune the clock tree, thus disabling portions of the circuitry that flip flop, not change state. As a result, power saving goes to zero. And so that's essentially why this is enabled is because it disables certain parts of the graphics card that you're not actually using. But the problem is, is that well, the graphics card can be dynamically changing what it's using all the time. And so that's why disabling this raises the idle power consumption by almost 50% from 100 watts to 150. And so with that being said, that's the reason why it's so powerful. And there is actually also registry keys that are undocumented. So if I wanted to find, for example, um, other types of registry keys, NVIDIA doesn't list all of them inside of here. This is just a lot of them, but there are more. You can actually look this up through specifically Process Monitor, which is actually a service that I've covered in this channel before too, where it will log and record D words that are actually used by the graphics card or whatever actual registry tree you choose to use. And so for that one, for example, if I do RM Power Feature, well, RM Power Feature 2 is also listed as another one. And so for this one, I essentially got lucky. This is normally not how this is supposed to actually work, but well, sometimes. So with that one specifically, if you apply the exact same D word value of, you know, the 554 of that one right there, and you put just a two in front of it, well, now our idle power consumption goes from almost 150 to 160, now up to a absolute massive, almost 200 watts at idle. So let me pull that up for you guys right here. So with that one specifically, that one, We'll draw almost 200 watts at idle, and here it is right here. So that's the reason why this kind of stuff is so interesting is because being able to change this allows you to experiment and figure out more about your graphics card and what might actually be going wrong and hurting your performance. And obviously this does dramatically raise the temperatures at idle, so make sure that you have adequate cooling before enabling this one, which is why I say that doing this from this point forward is completely on your responsibility to make sure that you're not doing anything incorrectly. So with that here's how nvidia actually sets up their values so you'll notice that for example inside of here there is a couple of d words that will be for example this where it's rm validate client data and i have zero one all the way through seven 
Now, how we set that up is like this. So it's using what's called a bit mask or a binary mask or a binary map or a binary mask map, something like that, where it essentially is just essentially a way of converting values of information into essentially other values of information. So for example, with this one, when it says all enabled, if I wanted to validate client data and specifically have all of these other ones beneath it, I have to essentially set values of one. Now, it looks confusing at first because you're probably thinking, oh, that means I just enter a registry value of one, like this one, for example, which is disable dynamic p-state. No, that is not the case. That will not do anything because this one is using a very specific type of actual um, registry value. And so what that one is, it's like this. So this one is using a binary map like this, where if I wanted to have all of these be set to one, I have to do where one is specifically one bit and then zero is zero bits, but two is two bits and three is still two bits, but it's one for both. So a value of one, I would set it up like this and I would do zero, zero all the way to zero seven. And so value of one would be the first bit for each pair. So for example, zero and one, so zero and one, you set it to one. Value of two would be the opposite of that. So we would essentially flip the bit. And so now, that would be essentially how we would actually capture the actual information. And if I want to disable just one specific part, like if I wanted to only disable just the kernel buffers validation, well, then I would have to do specifically just two and three. So if I wanted to leave everything else by default, then I would have to set everything to zero because this is what it's saying is that zero is default. Well, I would want to say, for example, that one to be enabled or enabled, it's one. So then I would set two value. And then if I wanted to actually get the actual value that I would enter into the registry, so if I were to do RM validate client data, I would just copy and paste that actual value into here. Just do RM validate client data, however you would see it. And then online, we can actually look up an actual binary to hex converter. So for that one, for example, I would type it in like this. I would remove all of the actual spaces because we're, these don't use spaces and it doesn't really understand much. It. So I'd remove all these spaces, then the actual value will be four. So then I would take four and then I would enter it in. That would be if I wanted to specifically change just that one part of that one string of that one aspect of the graphics card. And so yeah, guys, that's basically how it works. And there are, like I said, a bunch of other ones that are undocumented that for right now, we don't have a ton of information about, but we know that they exist and there are ways to actually modify them. And actually, um, Perf Guy has a couple of them that he gives in the Twitter um, as well. So if you want to actually check out his account, he'll list a couple of other ones as well too, especially for the uh, clock gating and things. So again, check him out because he has more than just the information that I've already given you here. So for example, SLCG, so second level clock gating, that's also one that is used by the actual graphics card. And there are tons of them. There are tons of actual D words that are used. So yeah, guys, if you feel like you got any information out of this that is useful to you, um, please consider subscribing. Please consider following and please all of that fun stuff. It really does mean a lot and um, is um, helpful to see you guys liking and um, leaving a bunch of really helpful comments. Um, but yeah, guys, um, have a good one. My name is Savitarix and I'm out.